Hey everyone, so today I wanted to talk about this new indicator that I published for weekly profiles. I'm just gonna walk through what I built it for and kind of how to use it, and also show some additional features and ideas that I'm working on for the future. So the name of it is just weekly profiles TFO. I'm actually just gonna delete it from my chart and re-add it, that way I can walk through the different steps to set it up. So this is what it looks like when you first add it to your chart, and what all these lines represent are essentially past week's data and how the close price progressed throughout the week. So if you see this line here, all these points in time represent the close price as it progressed throughout the week. And we're basically just anchoring that to the current week's open to see how price fluctuated. And that's all here because I have show historical weekly profiles turned on. If I turn that off, they will appear off. And if I show this weekly profile table right here, then what this is telling me is essentially we have from this current time frame, I'm on NQ 30 minute chart. Given the amount of look back history we have on this chart, we have saved 136 profiles and are showing them here. The average range of each profile, in other words, the weekly low to the weekly high, on average is about 4.61%. Now this current range is just the range of the current week. It is only a Monday, so we're only 1.12%. And this gives you a quick idea of what days make the high of the week and what days make the low of the week. So basically from these, 136 instances, I can see that 18 instances made a high of the week on a Monday, or 13% of the entire data set. Tuesday high of the week occurred 20 times, or 15%, and so on and so on. So if I wanted to filter this data a little bit more, for example, if I was anticipating the low of the week to be put in on a Monday, then I can enable this filter for low of the week and set it to Monday. And now you can see we, it significantly reduces the amount of profiles on the chart. So if I disable this really quick, you can see here in the table that the low of the week is made on a Monday 25 times. So when I enable low of the week, I should expect to see 25 weekly profiles. And that's exactly what happens here. So from these profiles, then you're getting the average range just from those instances filtered by a low of the week on a Monday. So now from this data set, we can see that for each week that the low of the week was made on a Monday, the high of the week was made on a Friday 60% of the time from this data set of 25 weeks. And again, this only goes back as far as TradingView lets you, and that is dependent on your time frame and also your TradingView plan. I believe for me, this is currently going back to January of 2022. So since January 2022, we have had 25 weeks where we have made low of the week on a Monday. Now, as an example, I can filter this down even further to see the weeks that made a low of the week on a Monday and also a high of the week on a Friday. So if I enable the high of the week filter for Friday, then I'm only going to expect to see 15 profiles, which we do here. And this profile resolution is really just specifying how often we want to update the close price. So for example, I'm on a 30 minute chart, so the lowest I could set this to is 30 minutes, and it'll track the closing price of each weekly profile every 30 minutes. You could also set this to some larger value, say four hours. And it's obviously a much more simplified way of viewing things, but it does give you kind of a better picture and is a little easier to see. Definitely a little easier on the eyes compared to before. And if you notice that some profiles have a lighter color than others, it's because of this option right here. So if I turn this off, then everything is a deeper color. But if I turn this on, basically what it's doing is checking to see the similarity to the current week. So you can see when I alternate between these, that for example, this line right here, the kind of dark blue slash purple, isn't changing that much and that implies that it's pretty close to the current week's price action given the amount of data that we have right now. Likewise, you can see that this profile right here gets really light, which implies that the price action is not very close to approximating the current week so far. So I'm actually gonna switch over really quick to the other indicator that I'm currently working on. Again, the one we were just looking at is already published and open source, you can add it to your chart. This one is just a work in progress. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with it yet. But I'm using it because I can filter how many profiles I want to show according to how close it is to the current week's price action. So if I just do five right now, then this is what we get. And I'll actually use last week as an example because it played out really nicely. So if I go to Sunday, so basically this is showing how last week played out. And since we have the entire week's amount of data here, we can show the five closest weekly profiles that occurred since January 2022. And we can see how each have some similar characteristics. So obviously the blue one fit really nicely to you know Thursday and Friday. And we can even increase the resolution here so we can see all the little fluctuations that happened on this 30 minute chart. And you can see just from this blue line how we had this big pop. It kind of caught this low that also occurred last week and this low here and pretty much exactly hit the high of the day. But the rest of Friday's fluctuations didn't quite pan out exactly like that. 
Although the time that the local highs and lows were forming was pretty close to what was happening during that week or day rather. And even still, if I just show that profile, so I'm showing the singular closest profiles of the entire week, that's gonna pick out the blue line. It still had some similar characteristics on the other days. Um, and mind you, I'm not filtering by high the week or low the week here. I'm just taking the entirety of all the weeks that we have and finding basically the best fit. So on Monday, we put in the low. So even though those filters weren't applied, we still have a Monday low of the week where we have this manipulation that pretty much lined up with Monday's fake out and didn't really do much. Tuesday, you can see we followed the price run pretty closely. Wednesday wasn't really that close in my opinion. Again, we had this fake out, but it was a couple hours prior. Although if you put it in the context of what exactly was going on here, we had a couple of lows right here, some news at 8.30 and price ran lower to sweep those lows. And that's kind of what happened here as well, except it happened pre-news where it took out this low and then went higher. And what I don't think I mentioned earlier is that all of these profiles, these are all measured as a percent move from the open. So if you can imagine NQ a few years back was trading much differently than it was currently. So if we were to measure this based off of raw points alone, that would probably be distorted. So we're measuring off of percent changes. So the percent change from the weekly open to each of these points on the blue profile is exactly the same as how it played out in that given week, which I believe this was some week during March of 2023, if anyone's curious. But in any case, we see that similar manipulation and expansion on Thursday. And since this was tracking so closely at this time, I was watching this on Friday just to see how it would play out. And it definitely did have some similar characteristics, although it was just tough to monitor on a lower time frame because this profile happened so long ago that on a 15 minute chart, for example, it wasn't present. We had a different one here because our look back or how many bars we can access in history was not the same. And just to be clear, I think this is, it's very lucky that this picked up this particular profile and price followed it this closely. When I shared it on Twitter, I think a lot of people took it too literally and and some people were definitely kind of eager to use something that I think they might not totally understand. Because the fact is, this is not going to play out like this every single week or day or whatever. And in fact, it, I think it'd be an interesting exercise just to go back to the weekly open and see how the closest profiles change. So if we go back to the open here, and I'll just show something like the three closest profiles. So already you can see we're not showing what we had before. And that's because it's constantly updating as we get new information from the weekly candle. So these are the three closest profiles from the very minimal time that we have on this chart. So if I go to the end of Monday, so I basically just let Monday play out to see what the profiles would look like. Again, none of these are what we ended up with in the end. These were just the closest approximations at the current point in time. Now I'm stepping forward to the end of the day on Tuesday, and you can see we actually have some pretty close approximations over here. Again, I'm only showing the three closest profiles, so a couple of them seem to suggest a slow fall off and mixed reviews on what's going to happen after that. Now I'm stepping forward to the end of the day on Wednesday. So at this point, we have three of the five days of weekly price action. We should be fairly set on some of the outcomes that we can have, or at least to measure which ones we're most similar to. And what's kind of interesting to see is that all of these have similar characteristics in that they have this kind of slow doing nothing. Of course, it's not very active in overnight session, but you have this fake out and then a move higher in each of these cases. And obviously, since we've seen what happened, that is exactly what played out. And although it's not the same color, this is the profile that we ended up with. So we can see by Wednesday's time, we did have um, the closest outcome by the end of the week already on the chart. Now we are at the end of the day on Thursday, so we have four out of the five days of the week, so we have pretty much all the data that we could use to anticipate what might happen on Friday. And all of these seem to suggest a Friday reversal in some sort. And of course, that's not necessarily what played out, although we did get a pretty decent retracement towards the open that kind of met the criteria of these lows that were put in in previous weeks. But I figured I would show the thought process of walking through that example since I was kind of highlighting that on Twitter last week. And I don't know if I established this earlier, but none of this has to do with ICT, like classic low of the week, midweek reversal, any of that stuff I really don't care about. I'm really just trying to align historical data with what's happening currently and seeing what information that data can give us and how it can help us for the rest of the week. Now, I'm also working on a similar concept for daily profiles in addition to weekly. Uh, which might be a topic for another video. But yeah, I just thought that was something interesting to show. Again, I did put out the public version of this indicator last week. 
It is completely free and open source, so feel free to check it out if you want. I just figured I would highlight kind of my thought process as I was building all this stuff out. If there's interest, I'd be happy to make another video on the daily profile stuff and see how we can use that as well. And I'd be happy to publish some version of the indicator for that too. But yeah, just let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.